Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about properties of right triangles. Alright, so here we go. So, um, first of all, the number one property of right triangles, which I'm sure you have heard of before, is called the Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagorean theorem. And so the Pythagorean theorem basically says a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And so to give a little context to, to what they're talking about here, and you probably have seen this before, but uh, but you may have never actually seen this visual proof before, um, is uh, if I have a triangle, let's go ahead and draw one out here. A right triangle, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and make this angle right. Um, if I have this right triangle and I have, uh, if I label these sides, let's label this side A, this side B, and this side C, then what they're saying is, well, uh, it's kind of actually a remarkable thing that uh, the square of A plus the square of B is, uh, is equal to, or I should say A squared plus B squared is equal to um, C squared. Okay, And so let's um, really quickly just talk about like visually, what does that actually mean? Because you may never have actually ever ever seen that. So, um, what is a squared? Well, a squared is this. If I took the length a and I made a square out of it, let's make this square, like that so, where the base and the height are both equal to a. Um, if I took this area, and actually let's uh, go ahead and grab b now, and then I added on um, the area of b, the square of b, so again, width and height equivalent to b, then that should equal the square of c, whatever that happens to be. Let's draw out this square. I'm kind of running out of room. c is kind of big. Probably go a little bit higher than that. But basically, if I calculated the area, because that's what this is, c squared is the area of this of this square, um, then that should be equivalent to the area of a plus the area of b, which is actually quite amazing. And that is a, a visual proof right there. And you can um, actually go through this if you if you. Uh, if you would like to, you could take some cutouts, right, and and actually prove this to yourself that this does work. Okay. All right. Um, so let's also talk about um, the six basic trigonom trigonometric functions, and you're probably already uh, aware and have probably done some math with the first three, um, and you've probably heard of this acronym because this is how we typically remember it. It's called SO, CA. Toa. And so where does Sokotoa come from? Well, again, if I have some kind of triangle, let's go ahead and list one out here, draw one out. Um, and let's call this the right angle here. And what we have to do is we have to decide uh, some kind of angle, which, which angle are we referring to? This is actually called the reference angle. Um, but basically, if this is my reference angle, then the side, the, the long side is always called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. The side that is closest or adjacent to the angle is called the adjacent side. And the side that is on the opposite of the angle is called the opposite side. And so using this terminology, we can use this acronym, so -ka toa to use um, our first three, or to define our first three trigonometric functions. Um, and so the first three trigonometric functions are, um, let's go ahead and list them here, trig functions. The first three are going to be sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and define these using the acronym so ka toa. So with so, uh, it basically says that si S is for sine, O is for opposite, H is for hypotenuse. Um, and we say that the sine of theta of the angle is equal to the opposite side, the length of the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse. And there we go. 
So we can use that function to, uh, well, we have three variables. We have the angle, we have the length of the opposite, we have the length of the hypotenuse. So if I have two out of the three, I can solve for the third, okay? All right, um, and so the, the next one is going to be the uh, ka for cosine, and that says that the cosine of theta is equal to a for adjacent over h for a hypotenuse. And then finally, toa is saying that the tangents, t for tangent of theta, is equal to o for opposite over a, I'm sorry, a for adjacent. Okay? And so you probably have already seen this before. It's uh, probably not news to you. Um, but what we are going to do now make this a little bit longer, um, is we are going to combine these three, or should I say extend these three uh, trigonometric functions to the next three. Okay, and so the next three that we're going to talk about are going to be the cosecant, and let me actually write out the whole name so you can see it, cosecant, um, the secant, and the cotangent. And actually, so these are known as like the, the six basic trig functions, but um, they really are paired with each other. And actually I drew these um, in pairs. So sine is actually paired with cosecant. Cosine is paired with secant and tangent is paired with cotangent. So I'm gonna show you um, how and why that works, okay? So um, as it turns out that um, sine pairs with cosecant because and I'm gonna use a different color to show this, um, because they are inverses of each other. So in fact, the cosecant, and I'm gonna, we usually write cosecant like uh, CSC, the cosecant of theta is actually equal to one over the sine of theta, okay? Because that's the inverse, right? Um, and actually, if you do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, you can multiply the sine over and then divide the cosecant right over, and you would uh, you could also write this as the sine of theta is equal to one over the cosecant of theta. That's equivalent, okay? So you could write uh, write it both ways, okay? Um, now, if I let me grab my uh, the color that I had before. Um, if I wanted to uh, solve for cosecant of theta, in, or write it in terms of um, the side lengths, right? Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And I just told you that cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine of theta. Well, if I replaced, if I substituted um, the opposite over hypotenuse for uh, sine of theta, um, then I would say, well, this is one over, uh, let me do this over here. One divided by opposite over hypotenuse. That's a big division here. Over hypotenuse, um, or I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. And when I divide by um, by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would be one times hypotenuse over um, the opposite. So actually, um, cosecant of theta is the flipped version of the sine of theta. Let me undo all of those so I can write it. So actually cosecant is the is the inverted um, um, of sine. So it is the hypotenuse over the opposite, okay? And so we can apply this to all of these because each one of these has its own um, inverse. And so let me grab uh, the pink color here and write that. So again, cosine is is the inverse of secant and vice versa. So I could say the secant of theta, whoops, secant of theta is equal to one over cosine theta, or with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, you could also say, whoops, cosine of theta is equal to one over secant of theta. Okay, um, and I might as well go ahead and, uh, well, now nah, we'll, we'll stick with this here. Let's finish this one up and then we'll get to tangent. Um, and again, so if I wrote out the secant of theta in terms of the uh, side lengths, um, it is the inverted um, or the inverse of cosine theta, so they are flipped. So this is a hypotenuse, hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, so secant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, which is the opposite of cosine. And then finally, last one, let's go ahead and, and we'll start with the ending here. Tangent is paired with cotangent. So if you could put these all together, that means the cotangent of theta is these flipped, right? So that would be the adjacent over the, op um, the opposite side. 
And then finally, let's go ahead and, and put this in here because we could also write this as the cotangent of theta is equal to one over tangent of theta. Or you could say that the tangent of theta is equal to one over cotangent of theta. Okay, so, um, all right, let's go ahead. I hope I forgot to erase that, but that's okay. Um, I wanna make one last point here, and that is how do you know what pairs with what? And it's actually quite easy um, because uh, well, the sine pairs with cosecant, and these are the, uh, I wouldn't say that these are the opposites, but S pairs with C, right? Sine, cosecant. And then cosine pairs with secant, where C pairs with S, right? It's not C and C, right? And S and S, nope, that's not the way it goes. It's S and C, and then C and S. And then these ones are really easy because uh, tangent and cotangent is really easy because they both have, they just have tangents in there. So um, so just remember that uh, tangent goes with cotangents. All right, and there we go. Those are the um, the the basic properties of right triangles.